hi everyone welcome back to my channel if you are new here please consider subscribing if you like my content my name is Anand and I'm a digital sculptor and modeler every once in a while when I'm between projects or when I have a little spare time I like to indulge in a little portrait sculpture I like doing portraits because it trains your eye and also keeps you humble because sometimes it's really hard to get a likeness this one for example as you'll see this time I decided to sculpt Hugh Laurie in the character of Dr. Greg House from the US TV series House MD. I watched this show a few years ago and I was really impressed by the character of Dr. House and Hugh Laurie's expert portrayal of him. So I've been wanting to make this portrait for quite some time now, but I finally made it. And I'm really excited to share this time lapse video with you. I'm not going to bore you all along with my comments, but uh, I might put in a remark now and then. For a long time, I used to start all my sculptures from a pre-modeled base mesh made in Maya so that I could use the good topology, the UVs, etc. But then about a year ago, one of my best mentors at work and a really good friend of mine I'm not going to mention names or anything because some people object to that so uh, he uh, said Anand you have to try building things from scratch using primitives because the base mesh will already have a form and structure and that's gonna influence your creative process and this was said in the context of some stylized almost cartoony characters that i was building at that time but i tried it for everything and it worked for everything including uh, realistic portraits so since then i've been doing exactly that for every character that i built it frees you from uh, having to worry about good topology right from the beginning it also gives you the ability to start simple and keep it simple for as long as you want without being forced into dealing with the more intricate features. Here you can see that I'm struggling quite a bit with the likeness. I keep falling into the stereotypical facial proportions whereas Hugh Laurie is anything but stereotypical his features are really quite unique and striking and it's difficult to get the likeness in such a face unless you let go of your textbook proportions and really accept what you see at face value sorry for the pun in other words don't let your preconceptions of form stand in the way of your observation of reality So as you can see now, I've kind of dropped the ball on uh, finding the likeness and decided that I'd rather spend my time adding more structural elements like the neck in the hopes that it will somehow help with the likeness. It may not. Still way off on the likeness, but uh, the lower face is somewhat starting to make sense. You can see here that I'm starting to fall into the trap of prematurely adding secondary forms. That's mostly because of my impatience and also I am subconsciously trying to cover up the structural deficiencies of my work by adding detail, which doesn't work really. That's not what a professional would do. 
you should never prioritize smaller forms over bigger ones. Always make sure that your primary forms are perfect before you move on. What I should have done in hindsight is I should have stepped away from the work and come back the next morning with fresh eyes and try to find out what's going wrong with my primary forms. Instead of trying to cover up the mistakes with detail, you would probably not be able to recover from such a misstep if you were working with clay or even worse stone. But digital sculpting as a medium is so forgiving that you can make big structural changes even after you are done with your sculpture with you know details down to the skin pores and everything but that may not be a good way to learn digital sculpting adding primitives again for the ears I think placing the ears can actually help with the likeness. It is kind of an important waypoint within the bigger form of the head, whether you look at it from the front or the side. I know reference photographs can look really different from each other but you can rely on them to a large extent because the bone structure is usually going to be exactly the same unless the photographs were taken maybe half a century apart or something. Of course you will need to make allowances for the lighting, the expression and the state of the subject's grooming. So we have come to another crucial milestone here, the introduction of the eyeball. As you'll see, it takes a little trial and error to get the size of the eyeball right, and then the size of the iris. Another primitive for the upper eyelid. I've used a bit of uh, poly paint to mark the iris there.
Sometimes the smaller forms can help with achieving likeness but not if you have failed with the bigger forms. As you will see it is not the details but one big change that will eventually save this portrait. You may have guessed it already. Okay, this right here, changing of the position of the eyeball is what I consider to be the turning point. I don't know why I didn't see the mistake before, but I saw it right at the point where I was about to abandon hope. I have to say, things started looking up after I made the change and achieving likeness again seemed like a possibility. As you will see later, I'll continue adjusting the size and position of the eyeball. But this definitely was the crossroads at which I realized what was fundamentally preventing me from feeling any satisfaction in the work and preventing me from moving forward.
adding a bit of anatomy at the neck. Don't worry, I won't bore you with another anatomy lecture. So my obsession with topology has finally overtaken me. So I'm appending a previously modeled bust and it's a female bust. Now I'm going to snap this new mesh on to my sculpt repeatedly over multiple subdivision levels. I'm gonna speed up this section a bit more.
All right. Now it seems like we are confident enough to go into a bit more detail, like skin folds, etc. We haven't started using alphas or anything yet. We are still sticking to our damn standard and inflate brushes and an occasional clay brush. Finally starting to break the symmetry here, which should have been done sooner.
okay so this is something that's not really in my repertoire that is fiber mesh but I want the model to look somewhat complete without having to take it out of ZBrush and use something else to do the hair. Xgen is my preferred method for creating hair but I don't have a Maya license at the moment and I'm still learning the new hair system in Blender so I want to create something that looks like hair in ZBrush for the time being. not gonna push it too far because I'm not an expert on fiber mesh I've seen people doing amazing things with fiber mesh but uh, I haven't been able to figure it out so we'll try our best see my frustration right there You can see that I'm trying out all the different groom brushes but nothing seems to be really working out for me. The trusty old move brush seems to be the only one I'm able to use with any amount of effectiveness. Even then the results are not entirely predictable or under control so there must be something that I'm missing or some step that I omitted.
Yeah, it looks horrible. But I've kind of lost the will to push it anymore, so I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next part. Don't forget to like and subscribe.